black one. What's a cephalopod? What a wonderful dive. Hello, friends. I'm Alex Schnell. I'm so glad you joined me today. I've just been scuba diving, exploring a coral reef at Lizard Island in northeast Australia. It's actually part of the famous Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest coral reef system in the world. But now it's time to head back to Lizard Island Research Station to tell everyone what I learnt about one of Earth's most fascinating creatures the octopus. Won't you join me? Wonderful. Then let's go. Hello again. I'm here at Lizard Island Research Station and I'm ready to talk all about my dive at the reef and tell you about some of the different kinds of octopuses I study. I wonder if I could find some volunteers to help me. Well, hello there. I'm Dr. Alex. I'm a marine biologist and National Geographic explorer. I'm Evie. And I'm Oliver. Wonderful to meet you, Evie and Oliver. And thank you for offering to help out. And if you're listening to this, I hope you'll help us out too. There's so much to do and so much to learn about octopuses. I'm ready. I am too. Where should we start? That's always a good question. Let's start with what we know about octopuses. Oh, okay. Um, they live in the ocean? Good. That's absolutely correct. Octopuses are what we call marine animals. Different kinds of octopuses live in the salty water of every one of Earth's oceans. So, octopuses live all over the world? Yes, they do. Octopuses are divided into two types. Those that have fins and those that do not. Finless octopuses live along the coast in water that is pretty shallow. Finned octopuses make their homes on the ocean floor. You won't find octopuses in rivers, lakes or ponds though. These kinds of waters don't have salt. No salt, no octopuses. Got it? Got it. Good. Now what else do you know about octopuses? I know something. They have eight legs. I learned that octo means eight in math class. Like an octagon shape has eight sides. Yes. Octo means eight. Good job. An octopus has eight arms, not legs, though. Aren't they the same thing? Hmm. Maybe not. I guess I don't use my arms and legs in the same way. Good thinking. An animal uses its legs to walk or run. And some octopuses do use two of their arms to do sort of a walk across the sea floor. But an octopus uses its arms for so much more than just getting around. Like what? The octopus uses them to help it swim and catch food. It can also use them to pick something up. An octopus can even use its arms to help it hide. How can it do that? Well, it can bunch all its arms underneath its body so that it looks like a round rock. Or it can plunk its body next to some algae and use its arms and bumpy skin to also look like floating algae so that a hungry animal doesn't see it and swims right by. This is a really neat trick called camouflaging and we'll dive into this more later. Oh, that is quite tricky. Okay, an octopus has eight arms then, not legs. Good. Now an octopus is part of a group of animals we call cephalopods. Cephalo what? Cephalopod. Cephalopod. Well done. Let's all say it together. If you're exploring with us, try to say it too. Cephalopod. Cephalopod. Brilliant. Cephalopods also include animals like cuttlefish and squid. All of these animals have arms or tentacles attached right to their heads. Some people think they look like alien beings from another planet. Cephalopods often end up being inspiration for some unique character villains. I'm sure you can think of some, whether it's comic book villains with lots of robot arms or sea witches that have tentacles. Yikes! 
You're right. All of those arms and tentacles can seem really weird. But once you learn more about octopuses and other cephalopods, you'll see how useful and amazing those arms and tentacles really are. I believe you. That makes me think of a question, though. What's the difference between an arm and a tentacle? They both seem to be long and wiggly to me. That's a great question. Both arms and tentacles are made up of mostly muscle. And both arms and tentacles have what are called suckers. Suckers are made of special kinds of muscles and look kind of like the suction cups we can use to stick things to glass. And octopus arms have suckers that go all the way up each entire arm, while other cephalopods' tentacles only have suckers at the very tips. Tentacles come in pairs, and tentacles are also longer than arms. Ah, okay. That makes sense. So, how many tentacles do octopuses have? None. They just have arms. It's one thing that sets octopuses apart from other cephalopods. Squid and cuttlefish have both arms and tentacles. They use these tentacles to grab prey and pull the food in toward their mouths. Even more impressive is that their tentacles shoot out through the use of pump organs in their bodies that rapidly fill with water, allowing them to extend and retract their arms with incredible speed and precision. Cool. But if octopuses don't have tentacles, how do they get their food? With their arms? They do. Instead of using tentacles, an octopus grabs prey with its arms. Between its arms is some loose skin, or webbing. It looks a little like the webbing that is between a duck's toes. It wraps its food up in this webbing and brings the food to its mouth, which is called a beak. Like a duck beak? Mmm. An octopus beak is much more like a parrot's beak, only it's upside down. Cool. It's hard and sharp, which is very useful when biting into the shells of prey, like crab and clams. Inside the octopus mouth is something called a radula. Ooh, that's a cool word. Radula. Yes, let's all say it together. And for those listening on your Tony box, say it with us. Radula. A radula is covered with very tiny teeth. These teeth make the radula feel rough, like a nail file or a piece of sandpaper. The octopus uses its radula to grind up its meal and swallow it down. Neat! And an octopus beak isn't the only way for it to get into shells. It can use its suckers too. These suckers are strong, really strong. One sucker on some of the largest octopuses, just one, can lift up to 30 pounds. That's about the weight of a medium-sized dog. Whoa! Octopuses have hundreds of suckers on each arm, so they're often found on many lists of world's strongest animals. Wow, I had no idea they were so strong. I guess they could pick me up easily then. Ah, but that's the cool thing about these animals. An octopus can also use its arms and suckers to handle food and other objects very delicately. A mother octopus, for example, is very careful when she's moving her eggs around. How does a sucker work? When a sucker touches something, it automatically flattens out and grabs on. Muscles in the octopus arm make the sucker form fit to the object. And if you look at a sucker very, very closely, you would see that its edges are covered with grooves. Those grooves help the octopus to hold onto the object tightly until it's ready to let go, even underwater. So, how does the octopus not stick to itself? Wow, that's a great question. You're starting to think like a scientist. Thank you. We have found that the skin of each octopus makes its own kind of chemical that keeps its suckers from grabbing onto its own body. It can and will automatically suck onto other octopuses, though, even if they're the same kind. That is so wild. Yes, I agree. And suckers are just one amazing thing about octopuses. These animals have some truly interesting body parts, 